All right, guys, <clears throat> we're talking uh, more about proportion and getting accurate proportions today, and specifically about how can we measure angle. So when something's in perspective like this, how do we get this angle and measure it um, in our drawings and make sure it's right? Uh, it's pretty easy to approximate and guess and give our best guess and say, well, that's all I can do. But how do we get something like this more specific and make sure we feel like it's more accurate? And that's uh, the big um, technique I wanna talk about today is um, sighting and kind of measuring angles. So first of all, on something like, uh, uh, something like a box um, like this or a brick or whatever you know, you're drawing, we know a couple things for certain. These are always gonna be vertical when they're sitting on the table. So you're looking at vertical lines for these edges. That's easy, uh, um, edge number one, two, three. Um, so that part at least, we're, we're starting off knowing that those need to be straight. So let's say I'm gonna draw this right down here, kind of low on my page. This front corner right here, I know I can start off with just a straight up and down vertical line and I'm gonna be safe. So let's start there, that's a good jumping off point. Now. Let's talk about the right side edges. So I know for a fact that those are angling uphill. Now what I can do to test that is, I'm holding my arm out in front of me, um, straight out, uh, and I'm taking my pencil and I'm imagining there's a, uh, like a clear sheet of plexiglass in front of me. So let's just use, for now, let's just use the drawing board because that's flat in front of me. Now if I lean that pencil flat up against the board, I can spin this 360 degrees like the hand of a clock. So this would be 12 o'clock nine o'clock, six o'clock, et cetera, right? And I can get every degree in between because we know, here's the hard part, we know that that is angling uphill, but how much is it angling uphill? We have 360 degrees of possibility and it's tough to know. Well, what you can do is you can take your pencil and spin it on this axis, this flat axis. Now I'm not turning my pencil this way, that gets hairy. That's turning it, uh, breaking that flat plane. You want it to always be pressed up against something and here it's pressed up against an imaginary wall. But if you notice, I can start to move my pencil until it seems to line up with this angle, right? That's way too sharp. That's not sharp enough. I can find that line. Now, once I find that angle, I can jump over here and lean it down. So that's the angle we wanna get in our drawing. Now I'm gonna approximate it here, just guessing. Now I can say, okay, was that right? I'm gonna hold this up, I'm gonna move it over there. Ah, that's pretty close. That's really close to what I want, that's good. So I'm gonna lock that in right there as my, my angle. Now if that's the angle, it makes this line a lot easier because I know they're almost parallel, but they're not quite. Because of the rules of perspective, this is gonna go a little sharper. So eventually, the idea is that these would meet, but they're gonna meet way off in the distance. So those should be accurate, but I'm gonna check myself. Okay, that's the angle I've got now. Hold it up over here, wow, that's really close, that's good. Now the, the hard thing is, when you check in real life, you might hold your pencil like this, and then as you move, you're shifting it. You don't want to do that. You want to keep that pencil, your wrist, locked as steady as you can. And it takes a little bit of time and it slows you down in the beginning for sure. Um, so now I'm going to check this one. I'm going to just guesstimate. I know it goes uphill a little bit. So I'm doing my best guesstimation. So that would be this line over here. Now let's check it. I'm going to hold my arm out at an angle. Okay, lining up. That's the angle we want. What's the angle we've got? Ooh, let me check again. The angle we want right here, locked in. The angle we've got, it's pretty close. And if it's close enough that you're not sure what decision, where you would change it, then that's a good sign that you're locked in where you wanna be. Okay, again, I can guesstimate this one because I know that's just gonna be a little steeper than this. Again, eventually we want these to look like they're gonna come up and meet each other in the distance. So that's my front edge. Now I just decide where I want to cap this. It's obvious to me that if I cut it right here, that makes it way too short of a brick. Uh, it's a pretty long two by four piece. So I'd say about that looks like a good accurate representation of what's going on over there. On this side, it looks even just a little bit longer. So I'm gonna say mm, right around here. And all those lines are just straight up and down vertical. So that makes our life easy. Uh, we've got that locked down. Now I'm gonna double check my angle here. Something like this. Again, this should be a flatter line than this one. This one's gonna look a little steeper because eventually we want those lines to meet in the distance. So again, I'm checking this angle, checking it over here. Pretty close. I'm gonna err on the slightly less shallow or more shallow side. 
And then on that back line, a pretty shallow angle uphill, something like this. Okay, not too bad. So now once you get to this point, you can clean those lines up and darken them a little bit. So that's a good way to make sure that you know that those angles are roughly in the right spot. Um, now let's take a look at something even, I think, a little more difficult. So I'm gonna throw this out of the way here. Um, let's look at like a canister on an angle. Oh, that's gonna to wanna to roll, hold on a second. I'm gonna get resourceful here and use my kneaded eraser to prop that thing up. Okay, so a canister on an angle. What do we do when we've got something like this? I think these get even tougher. So let's even put it a little bit sharper toward us, just for the heck of it. Okay, that's not going anywhere now. Um, so now you've got a couple things going on. You've got a canister, which is already hard to draw up and down, you know, vertically. But we've kind of, I don't want to say we've mastered it. We've gotten the hang of that for sure. Um, but now you've got this canister that's kind of coming out at you in space. This is one of the harder things to draw, I think. It's when things start to go from, okay, we're looking at a side view, and now it's tilted towards you. Um, it gets really, really difficult. Uh, <clears throat> so really similar type of a thing to what we did here, but let's jump up. I'm gonna draw this uphill. I know it's gonna look weird because it'll look like it's just hovering up here in space. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just gonna first lightly, kind of loosely, draw what I'm seeing. So I see the opening, the rounded opening where the pop tab is on this canister. Okay, so notice how loose I'm being, really, really light and loose. Uh, then I see the canister coming uphill, going backwards in the distance, maybe at an angle like, oh, it's pretty steep. Maybe even a little sharper like this, the top of that. Uh, just guesstimating. Okay, it's kind of a long cylinder, but we're looking at something like this roughly. Now that was just my first best guess. Now these lines are some of the most important lines right here because that's showing that it's zooming back in space on us. So let's check that. I'm gonna hold my pencil up to the bottom of this canister right here. And that's a steep angle, something like this. Now I'm gonna check that in real life. Okay, not too bad. I did a pretty good job of estimating it. But we're looking at somewhere in that kind of a zone. It's a pretty slanted line, more so even than it was when we were looking at that little uh, brick shape. Um, now the top, if you notice, check this out. I'm gonna hold my angle here. The top is gonna be less slanted than the bottom. Those lines are, in theory, should be parallel, but in perspective, they're actually angled so that they're gonna meet at a pivot point in the distance. So I'm gonna hold this, I'll show you what I mean in a second. Okay, a little shallower, so somewhere right around here. So what I mean by that is that in the distance, as we zoom away from us, those lines should be getting closer and closer together until somewhere way up here, they're gonna actually converge and meet off the page. Okay, so that's the beginning of my canister or cylinder. Now, here's the tricky part of the opening of, of a cylinder um, when it's on its side like this. I'm gonna run a fake line, just pretend like there's a center line that runs through here. So I'm doing my best job of approximating the center, zooming down through the middle. Now, if, if that's the center line on this axis, there's also going to be a center line on this axis. Now, what people tend to wanna do is make that tr purely vertical. But just remember from our cylinder video, it has to be 90 degrees perpendicular to this axis line here. And what do I mean by perpendicular? It makes a perfect 90 degree like a cross or a plus sign. So we're looking more at something like this uh, for a, a, an axis line across the opening. So that means that this silver uh, opening to the can, and I'm just gonna say it's a little slimmer than the actual can itself. So we're looking at something like this. We now have an idea of the wide points, the high and the low point of that canister if that makes sense. So those points I just pushed right here are gonna be like here and here on the can. So that gives me one set of points. The other, I have to get the wide point here and here. So now I'm just doing my best approximation of what that canister looks like for me. I can see an awful lot of the opening because uh, it's tilted toward us. Okay, so I need to make sure that these are about equal distance from here to here is about the same as here to here. I can double check myself there and that's close enough. And now I can actually get into the point where I start to draw this 
cylindrical shape or elliptical shape, I should say, out. All right, not perfect, but it's close. It's getting there. So that's gonna be the silver part. Now, the weird thing about these cans is there's a little bit of a hump shape. It's like the shoulders of the cans right in here. And those two are going to have a little bit of a cylinder or elliptical shape, sorry about that. So that would be where the shoulder of the can comes in. Now, normally we'd be able to see that, but it's hidden behind this silver part. Okay, and then those connect with the outer edges of our can. And then as far as how long to make it, I think I made mine a little bit too long. So I might cut mine back a little bit if I wanted to make it truly true to life. All right, now there's plenty of detailing we could add to that can, um, but that's the general gist of how we would get that sort of foreshortened shape going um, on the table. And it's a lot closer because I'm able to map out with those kind of like the hands of the clock method. Um, it's a lot more accurate than what I could do if I was just purely kind of guesstimating.